Hello everyone. Okay, now we're on to the subject of composite area. And composite means basically combined area. And what that means is if we have a shape that's actually a combination of multiple shapes. I'll, I'll show you an example of what I'm talking about. You've probably all seen a basketball court before and you've seen the lane, right? It looks something like this, where you have a rectangle, you have your foul line, and then you have a semicircle, right? And let's say that the lane is 18 feet long, 10 feet wide. What would the composite area of this thing be? Well, we can do this, right? We would know then that the diameter of this circle is 10 as well, right? Since this is rectangular, this side of the rectangle is congruent to this side of the rectangle. They have the same measure, okay? Well, first we can figure out the size of this rectangle here very easily by multiplying the base times the height. So the base is 10, the height is 18, so the area of the rectangle is equal to 18 times 10, which equals 180 square feet. Okay, now we need to add this semicircle here. Well, how do we do that? Well, we figure out what the area of the circle would be and then divide that by two. So the area of this circle then, we know that the area of a circle is pi r squared, okay? So the radius would be five if the diameter is 10. So the area of the circle equals pi times r squared. Well, r is five, that would be 25. So the area of the circle is 25 pi, okay? So the area then of our semicircle would be 25 divided by two, that would be 12.5 times pi. So to find the area of this entire figure, the entire lane would be 12.5 pi plus 180. So the area of the whole thing would be 180 times, or not times, plus 12.5 pi. And we could put this in a calculator and get a value. 12.5 pi would be somewhere around, what is that, uh, 37 and a half plus a little bit, 39, 180 plus 39. 180 plus 39 would be somewhere around 219, approximately 219, something like that. You could put this into the calculator and get an exact number, okay? Let's try another one. These things can get kind of complicated and you, once again, you've heard me talk a lot of times how you have to put your detective hat on, right? And follow the clues. Well, here's another one we'll try. This time, instead of a rectangle, let's have a semicircle with a triangle. Right, there's the center of our circle. And let's say that they gave us values that this diameter of this semicircle was 16, and then these sides here were 17, okay? Well, to find the area of this triangle, I don't have everything I need, do I? I got a base, the base of it is 16 again, just like it's the radius of this circle, or not radius, diameter of the circle. But I don't have the base. How could I find that base? Well, this, little part here is a right triangle, right? From here to here, right? This is a right triangle. And one side of that right triangle is half of this diameter, that would be eight. 
and then we have the hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle. The hypotenuse is 17. I can find this by the Pythagorean theorem, can I? So the height would equal, well, the hypotenuse squared, 17 squared, would equal 8 squared plus the height squared. Right? If this is the height. 17 squared, 296, 64 plus h squared. Or, I'm not sure about that number, whatever it is. 17 times 17, let me look that up. 17 times 17, 49, 7 times 1 plus 2 is... 99. <laughs> Wait. No, 4. That's 119. Sorry. And then 170. Yeah, 289. So 289. Okay. Now we subtract 64 from both sides, and we get 225. These go away, equals h squared. The square, I take the square root of both sides to get rid of this squared, and this is 15 equals h. So this height here is 15. Now I know what the base and the height are. The area of the triangle here is 15 times 16. Which equals 240. Then the area of the semicircle is going to be the radius is 8, so it's going to be pi times r squared. 8 squared is 64. That'll be 64 pi divided by 2 since it's a semicircle. We're only taking half of the circle, so this equals 32 pi. So the area of this figure, the area equals 240, the area of the triangle, plus the area of the semicircle, which is 32 pi, 240 plus 32 pi. Again, you can put that in your calculator and get a number. Okay, so that's another example of composite area. Let's try one more. This time we're going to have a figure looks like something like this. I messed it up. Let me try it again. Okay. Where this portion is a parallelogram and this portion down here is a trapezoid. Okay. Let's say they tell us that the measures here are, this is 4, this is 5, this height of the parallelogram is 3. Okay, The height of the trapezoid is 10, and this is 12. Okay, Let's say we've got these measures. And I'm going to try and figure out what the whole area of this figure is. Well, first I've got a parallelogram with a base of 5 and a height of 3. How do we find the area of a parallelogram? We multiply the area of a parallelogram is base times height. So 5 times 3 is 15. So the area of just this portion here is 15. Now then, to find the area 
of the bottom part, the trapezoid, we need to use the formula for the area of a trapezoid, which is one half base one plus base two times height. Okay. So we'll put in these values. One half times base one is 12 plus base two. Well, here's base two. We don't know what that is, but this is a parallelogram. And one of the properties that we know about parallelograms is that opposite sides are congruent. So we know that if this is four, this also is four. That second base is four. And then times the height of the trapezoid, which is 10, okay? So this area equals one half, 12 plus four is 16. One half of 12 plus four is 16 times 10. We'll multiply one six or 60, 16 times 10 is 160 and one half of that is 80. So the area of the parallelogram is 15. The area of the trapezoid is 80. We add those together and the area of the whole figure is 95. 80 plus 15, the area of the trapezoid plus the area of the parallelogram. Okay, we can also do composite area where instead of adding, we subtract. What could that mean? Well, let's say that I had a figure like this. Let's say I had a square. Okay, and perfectly inscribed in that square was a circle. Okay, and they asked us just to give them the area of this portion here, 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 and here. So we're, they're asking like the area of the square without this area of a circle inside. Well, then all I need to do is find the area of this square and subtract out the area of the circle. Well, let's try this. Let's say they told us that the area of this, or the side of the square was 10. To find the area of a square, we just square it, right? So the area of the square is 10 squared. 10 squared is 100, 10 times 10, okay? Now we just need to subtract out the area of this circle. Well, I don't know what this radius would be, or do I? Yes, I do, because the diameter, since this is inscribed, it touches on either side. The diameter is 10. This radius is half of the diameter, or five. So the area of the circle equals pi r squared, 5 squared is 25 times pi. Pi r squared is 25 pi. So to find the area of the whole thing, it would be 100 minus the area of the circle, which is 25 pi. Okay? So that's how we do, we call this a shaded area because these, the part that we're looking for is shaded. All right, we're looking for the shaded area here. And to do that, we just take the outer piece and subtract out the part that's missing. Give, we've got some examples of this in your assignment. Give that assignment a try. Let me know if you have questions. Thank you.